And that's why time zones are. Welcome back, everybody, to the Cover Band Confidential Podcast, the podcast for band leaders and cover band people who want to learn to rock more and suck less. Here in Greensboro, North Carolina, I'm Dan Ray. Hey, it's Cedar Rapids, Iowa. It's Mike Schulte. That's right. We got Mike in the house. Welcome. Did you just say time zones are, and you just like that? that I don't know that if that's a real sentence. Like, why that's why time zones, zones are. are. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 I mean, it's, you know, one of the things, if you're a flat earther, I guess the, the sun rises at the same time everywhere. But for the rest of us, the sun rises at different times, different places, which is why two o'clock to get started for this for me is not two o'clock for Mike. And I had to slap my head about when I thought he was coming. And so, well, yeah, it's all good. We sorted it all out. It's all fine. Are you, Dan, are you a believer that it is five o'clock somewhere? It absolutely is five o'clock somewhere for sure. See, I, but I, I am not a believer of that. Cause right now it's, it's five twenty eight somewhere. Oh, you well, know what I mean? Like it's fair. not, it's okay. not five o'clock somewhere. Right. I mean, well, listen, here's the thing. Time zones are an approximation. So there's, if you go by solar time, it's, there's a line of noon moving across the planet. So somewhere, okay. some, okay. some, some line of longitude is precisely solar five o'clock. I'm going to just, that's my, <laughs> that's the case I'm making. And if it enables me to drink early, then I'm, I'm good with that. You know what the the Jimmy Buffett franchise should figure out a like a supersonic jet oh. that doesn't have to refuel that just is constantly in the five o'clock. I love it. Just time zone going around yeah, the globe, and you just drink margaritas and stuff. I would I'd go on that. I would fly that around. Yeah, to to just circumnavigate at five five o'clock. <laughs> you get to do one 24 hour rotation yeah. of the world yeah. where it's always five o'clock. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. It's a great idea. It's a great idea. Is that even Jimmy Buffett? That's somebody it's else, isn't somebody, it? Five o'clock somewhere? I don't, I yeah. don't even know. I, I love the idea so much. I don't even care. We, we'll attribute it. It's fine. <laughs> so should we end the podcast? Are yeah, we good? Done. Yeah. Done. Well done. Thank you. That was our <laughs> big idea for the week. No. Uh, so listen, we have Mike in this week because, of course, Adam is on vacation with his family. Um, those of you who um, kind of followed what his family went through in the last year, it is um, nothing short of a miracle, frankly, that that whole family's together yeah. there and able to be, you know, they went through some medical stuff that was pretty scary and uh, and saw the other side of it. So yeah, fantastic. And so while he's off enjoying, I brought in Mr. Mike from the Pork Tornadoes, among other things. How's uh, that's good? How's life? It's been man, it's been a while. Every once in a while, when I when I run out of podcasts to listen to, you know, like maybe a long drive coming up, I've already exhausted this week's kind of new episodes. Every once in a while, I will go back uh, to visit Coverman Confidential episodes, and I I like going back to listen to the distraction cast that we used to do back in the day, man. Those were those are those yeah. are a lot of fun. They were fun and much needed at the time. Oh. Yeah, but it's been a while since I've been on here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always good. We were uh, hopeful you'd be able to join us. I don't know what Adam's going to do next week, but I've already claimed you. So I mean, and, you know, you, know, you <laughs> can probably come up with another whole hours worth of content. But uh, Adam likes doing solo episodes. That's true. That's true. I've done some of those. I, I I don't know. I like the back and forth. Yeah, back and forth is nice. Yeah, it's it's really nice uh, with Confused Breakfast with our podcast yes. having three of us. And I think we get a lot of complaints that are, are like compliments that man, it just flows. It's it's because I just at any point you don't have something or you're you're lacking some content for that. Somebody else is right in it. Right. So having two or three is pretty crucial for yeah. stuff like this. Yeah. Even you know Adam and I agree on ninety percent of the things that we talk about. So we. We end up kind of being a echo chamber, but um, <laughs> but even if we weren't, you know, it's good to have the back and forth and and, and differing ideas sometimes. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen. Speaking of feedback, I want to just thank everybody who reached out to us about the last episode. The last episode was about band leader burnout and that whole experience of like, oh my god, I got a show in two weeks and I just can't. Um, I really uh, appreciate how much that appeared to have touched a nerve of folks and how much our <laughs> admitting to that experience <laughs> seems to have really. Uh, 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 been appreciated by people really a lot of just so many comments like, Oh my God, me too. Thank you for saying it kind of all, all of that world. And, and, uh, yeah, thanks for saying, thanks for saying it back. You're welcome. Obviously that's what, that's what we're here for. It's nice to, it's nice to just know that you're not alone, which is why I think it's so important just to talk about things and yeah. having a Slack thread like that with this group is just to be like, Hey man, like I'm feeling this. Has anybody else felt this before? And just to know someone else has gone through what you've gone through is such a, such a, it almost makes you feel better just to know yeah. that someone else has felt this weird misery that you're in. But I did put a poll up. I don't know if you saw that. I asked, I wanted to know what the demographics of the group were, uh, you know, whether they were a, a true band leader, whether they were just mm -hmm. that, that hired gun who just shows up and plays, or if they were in a democratic union of equal partners. And it's, um, it's interesting because you have, uh, 
almost 50 percent of the people in there are band leaders yeah. in that group yep. uh with the remaining percentage remaining 40 ish percent being democratic unions and then only a couple hired guns which makes sense because i don't know what you what you would care about the things you're saying there and what we're saying in the group if you're just a guy that shows up and plays right yeah yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, and, and one of the outcomes, of course, for people from last week is they got to admit like how attractive that sounds, how much <laughs> showing up and playing, you know. Dude, grass is always greener, though. That's the one thing I will tell you is in any aspect of life, like, of course, it sounds great to just show up and play. But the reason that you're a band leader is because you care and you want to be able to you think that your ideas make the most sense and you think that you have the most experience and and if you didn't get a chance to exercise that it would suck totally. it would totally suck Absolutely. seeing a guy running a band into the ground that would just be perfect yeah you know and you're like oh this is such a perfect vessel and you're killing it yeah and i've been in that band and i left it, it right yeah. weird yeah <laughs> you could have stayed man I it would have been awesome I, I, Not, I, yeah. no responsibilities let's just show up and play yeah. nope. and you left I, I left and then my next band was a democracy that all everything fell on me so my next band was not a democracy it's a benevolent dictatorship that's how that works. You, you tend to find that there are people in democracies, but they're not. not. <laughs> I think Josh uh, from Rising Phoenix is like, well, it's not really, but it kind of is. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm open to everyone's input. I want to do what everyone thinks is the right thing. Certainly, you know, I got lots of experienced folks in my group who played for a lot of folks for a lot of years and done a lot of things. Um, and I'm driving the bus. Uh, and, I, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have a little straw poll about where the bus ought to go, but I'm driving it. That, I, I think that's a great way because if you don't truthfully have like the equal partnership where where it truthfully is, yeah. then that's a great way to do it to where at least everybody's got to say. Yeah. And at least because I'm sure there's been times where your members have said, have you thought about this? And you'd be like, ah, no, actually, I didn't all, think about that. That's a great idea. Yeah, all the time. All the time. And yeah. they've also said, have you thought about this? And you'd be like, yeah, terrible idea. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, like, yeah. Or, or I did. That'd probably work. It's just not what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. We're not doing it. Yeah. Cool. Well, speaking of, we are uh, getting awful close to this date on November 2nd, which will be the first outing of Big in the 80s. Um, this week, the uh, the move was to take our big list of, of Learn It songs, the work list, and turn it into a design set experience and um, and whack out of it several of the ones that just aren't going to make it. We knew they, we knew, we knew we were being, being ambitious with the list. We knew there were some that were challenges to get together. We knew the sheer number of them was going to be a lot for the time we had. So there were some that just aren't going to happen much as it kills me. Take on me is not going to make it the, the, the pace of it. And just the, the, the way we're doing it, it's live drum, live bass, all track and me singing. Yeah. And so yep. like, that's just a whole lot for my bassist to carry, uh, melodically he's, he, he's, and the, the, it's faster than you think. That song moves, and so oh, it does. What's BPM on that roughly? Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't know in front of me, but if fa you faster when, like, when you when you start the when you start the track, it's faster than you think. No matter, even if you thought, oh, this song's faster than I think, it's still faster than you think when the track gets going. So I bet it's like 180, 190 it's if gotta you're double be. timing it. It's got to be, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've been struggling to keep up with that, and you know, we're three players who haven't played with a click in a really long time. And so we're getting, getting the chops back up with that. And that's, it's working. Here's what I discovered, you know, and I've, I've shared a little bit about the evolution of the tracks I've been building. Cause you know, the click was a little low or the click was high enough, but the cues weren't audible or something. So I EQ'd a bunch of mid range into them to make them cut a little better. And then I realized in my mixer, I got extra headroom in the compression. So I like ah. squashed them way flat in the compressor and brought them way up with the makeup gain. And boy, they just jump right out at you now. It's like the 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 click is being hit with a like being hit with a ball peen hammer. It's like <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah, you're blink yeah. you're blinking yeah. every time yeah. it goes yeah, off. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's I, inter it was an interesting thing to hear. Oh, sorry, go ahead, man. Oh, I was gonna say feeding that mix into the Maestro DMX, which is driving the lights now. Boy, it is just it's got every beat. It's right on sync. It's doing amazing things with the lights just because it hears the click. It knows where it is in time. It's not trying to figure that out from drums that are a little buried in the mix or something. Right, so right. Really or dynamics like the light time. hits, loud hits kind of totally, thing. Totally, totally, yeah, yeah. I'm pumped to see the maestro in, in person someday. But I, I was going to say it was interesting for me to hear that, like, that you you guys were having trouble getting getting the click in the mix. And I was like, oh, really? You know, like, I, I just hear that thing. It's plain as day. But then I realized that it's just been so long since I've been playing to a click that um you know when you're first you guys are this is brand new you still you yeah. still want to hear all the parts and you still want to hear what everybody's doing and right. 
I my mix right now is just literally drums, click, cues, and a little bit of track. And then I don't I don't have very barely any vocals, mm-hmm. barely any guitar. I it's I know where everyone's at. I know what they're playing. I don't need to hear it in my mix and muck it up. Yeah. You know, but but that's from that's from eight years of doing it to where we already know where everybody's at we're not evolving anything exactly. we're not changing it. yeah i i just want to make sure i'm on the click and i know where the key where that where everything's at you yeah. know that's all i want yeah 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 i can tell um i can tell that my drummer charlie's mix has a lot of my guitar in it because that's when he starts to lose the click is when i'm doing something big yeah right there's probably no point for that he, he you know it may not be relevant to him it. at all to hear to hear me. He's yeah. just really he used to it. He might think he wants to hear it. Yeah, yeah he, he might think he wants to hear it. Yeah, and he's used to that because often uh, when we're not playing to a click, like I'm pretty much driving the track, and yes, you know, so he needs to kind of be oriented on me. Um, yeah, we'll we'll chat about that next time. We're, we're have nervous. him have him start have him bring the rest of the band down just like a little bit, you know, because if, especially if the track's there, that's that's his reference point to right. know that he's that he's doing what he's supposed to be doing. Yep. And especially because you started introducing cues and stuff, I mean, it might it might actually help him a little bit better. And and sometimes you put too much in there, it just everything goes like this, and it yeah. just yeah nothing cuts through. Where if you yeah if you lower some volumes sometimes it makes a little extra room for everything you know Uh, for sure for sure you know we're already using um he and i are on stereo mixes and we've got the click hard panned um, yeah which boy that makes a difference it doesn't tell him uh for hard pan or for any of you guys maybe not hard hard pan try to find like 25 percent of the left or something Mm. like that so that it's still it, it's a little bit louder and a little bit clearer because it, it is bleeding over a little bit into your right. See, try that and see if that makes any difference mm. for you. Cause that's okay. about where I put it. Yeah. Like, like halfway to the left side, you know, it's a good idea. We'll, we'll mess with all those things. We, we you know, this, that's where we're at. We're in the messing with things mode, but of course I got a date in two weeks that needs to, <laughs> needs to kind of remember work. when you announced that it was like, ah, that's nine months. From yeah. I know it'd be a piece of plenty cake. Of time. Yeah. Plenty. Yeah. It'd be easy. No worries. <laughs> No worries. It's going to be awesome. You guys are going to kill it. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be fun. And it, as I say, I've set it up to be reasonably low stakes. I got a photographer coming. Um, I'm going to use the the cameras. I got a guy. Can, part of the photographer is going to be using the my freehand cam. So I'll have some live camera work. And um, I'll, we'll leave there with something credible to, to use in marketing. That's really my yeah. al- almost and my just only the goal. First, get the first show out of the way. First Sometimes show out of the way. That's all yeah. you got to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, have something to sell. Have something to put up on a website. Doesn't even have a website. Doesn't have a Facebook page right now. It's a placeholder, exactly. but because I got nothing to put there right now. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're getting there. So th- this kind of leads us into the thing that you and I were wanting to talk about, and it was an idea that um, you know a topic that you have been thinking about. And when you said it, I realized it's really important to what I'm dealing with too. So do you want to lead us into that? Well, yeah. So. So I just recently went to my the second concert that I've gone to see since since before COVID. I used to go to a ton mm. of concerts, man. And then it just, you know, everything gets canceled. And then all of a sudden, we're just so busy that I can't get out because we're playing. And now all of a sudden, I got two kids. And we're like, geez, you know, like I, I realized it about six months ago that I hadn't been to a show. And so I, I bought two I bought two tickets. I went to see Sleep Token mm. uh, in Des Moines at this brand new, like, vi- uh what's the um what's the ticket monopoly place like the live nation it's a new live nation menu it's like 80 billion dollars and it's the it was the greatest uh concert experience i've ever had in my Mm. life just the the sound the lights the the brand new venue built from the ground up for crowd in for crowd purposes you know i mean everything about it was so pleasant and then uh on thursday i went to st louis and i saw 21 pilots have you ever seen them before you you ever heard of them you familiar with them yeah yeah i've heard of them i've never seen them they're a band that much like um you know i like to think i know my music uh but there's been a few bands over the years that i've been late to the game you know i felt like i made i slept on mac Mac miller was one for Mm. me Uh, i was like ah mac miller whatever like he's not any good and then when i actually heard mac miller i was like oh no I I give me everything, feed right. it into my veins. I <laughs> right. want him. Right. And the same thing happened to me with Twenty One Pilots because we started playing Ride, maybe like three, two and a half years ago. Uh, yeah, I know their radio songs; they're okay. But right. I, uh, the singer, gave me a, the song Car Radio, which is an old one of theirs that I just blew my mind. Mm-hmm. Like one of my favorites. I haven't stopped listening to it in in like a year. You know, and so I, I've di- I've dove deep in their catalog. They announced this new tour, and I kept hearing that they have the most 
like ravenous fan base in the world you know like they're just they're technically kind of an indie band still they only had a couple radio hits yep. this new album that came out nothing hit the radio and none of that stuff and i heard the shows are like it's like a cold play show i heard it's just like ah mm. so i went and hands down man it was the it was the greatest concert i've ever seen and here's where it's interesting it was in it was in a hockey arena huh. uh giant enterprise center twenty thousand people this the sound is not great right. it's it's not you it, if you've been to those shows they're not it's not perfect that the uh, the audio in those buildings and for me i always i used to always think it was all about the sound it was all about the quality of the music and i think i think crowds think that and but what i realized quickly is that it it was a show it was a true just to give you a couple examples they moved stages multiple times i know a lot mm -hmm. of bands do that but they did the first 10 on the main stage and then they had these these this side stage that they did some acoustic songs on and then they went back and then they had at the end of the show they made the crowd in the pit separate and then they wheeled in a drum set and a piano and then the crowd came back around them and they finished the last song in the middle of the wow, crowd cool the, the singer in at the end of car radio fell off the back of the stage like on purpose mm. lights went out and one second later he was in the top 300 section standing on a balcony to finish the rest of the song wow because the he clearly they had a stand in double they like perfectly thing yeah, it. yeah like the prestige kind of right a thing. right but, right yeah but who wouldn't affect oh wouldn't God. affect that's incredible yeah dude it, it like it gave me chills i like i like teared up three or four times just at just at watching people and and their experience there and and how important the event is like it's not i don't care how good you play uh sweet home alabama yeah. no one cares no one cares that you can do the eruption solo mm. no one cares no one cares that your drummer like he does a drum solo wow like they they care about the vibe in the room and and what it's doing to them and and i i wonder if that was like a like a COVID change, a lot of things have just changed in our mentalities. Yeah, like, yeah. I know for me, I used to care about the sound and and like who cares about lights and stuff. No, I I like I got chills just at every aspect of it, and it really it it put me in my place to know that we were that we're going the right direction, and mm -hmm. that maybe that's part of what our appeal has been over the last couple of years. But I didn't know that we were doing it, and now that I know it, I'm like oh. <laughs> like we're we're gonna announce a, a a big cedar rapids show here for february you're damn right we're gonna have like a, a side stage that's up by the by the mix and we're gonna figure out a way to do that yeah. like because i i just i want to do it man and i think i think you gotta if you're out there in any sort of this world of cover bands and tributes like it's not about the music as much as we want it to be it's it's not about how good of a player you are or I think it's just about what atmosphere you can create at at your events, man. And I I wonder if that's the trend, if that's where we're going, and if we should be thinking about that as band leaders, you know? Yeah, yeah. it's interesting. There, there are a few different sort of aspects to what you described that 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 struck me. That like that magic trick, right? You know what you'd call that in terms of showmanship is just spectacle, right? Like yeah. that's just people people are there for that. You know, last show that I saw that was like. A tier massive production that that was really impressive from a technical perspective was Roger Waters because there were yeah you know screens and videos and stuff flying in from all the sides and all <laughs> down you know at, at one point the the room was like cut in thirds by screens that were lowered down the long way you know a, a, a perpendicular Wild. to the stage with projections happening all across them and it's just it was so much bigger than you know Roger in a t shirt playing a bass you know. Thank God, because that's not much to look at. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, I, I think I think there is something to like that. And I think you're I think you're also right. There's something really different about consumers of of entertainment post COVID. I think I don't know. Even in, in the little rooms I play, it's different. They're they're not the numbers aren't like they used to be. There was a real sort of revenge period yep. where people came out a lot, and it's way back down off of that. Way back it's to gone. before, like a, a lot of that's that's sort of dissipated and so it's gonna take i don't know if you want to call it gimmickry but <laughs> if for, from the music purist perspective i'm sure it is like some like magic trick like that that has nothing to do with the music but it's it, it is what's going to speak to an audience it is what's going to capture this time of really hard to capture attention i think right now um well 
and Dan, I think you're in the right mind frame here because I I also think that the cream of the crop is is improving and and mm. putting in money and putting in time to the show yeah. and and these these regional acts that you see these huge you know, like yacht rock review type bands where they're like no nah, no we're we're a national band we're just we're a cover band but we're we're just doing it better than everyone else i think that locally for all of us there are the bands that are going they're just taking the bar and they're raising it and raising yeah. it and raising it yeah. to where people are now starting to expect that from everyone right and the fact that you are f finally going to like the clicks and the and the massive tracks nobody nobody cares man and it, it in fact it enhances the so i was trying my hardest to figure out how he did that trick like when the switch happened right this song was the fourth song of the show and i i i can almost tell you with guarantee he was out there for the first three and then lights went down after the third stunt double came up and then that means that his and his voice was all tracked for that fourth song yeah. until he got up to the balcony yeah and did anyone know not one person knew yeah. not one person cared because it, it doesn't matter like just make it good make right. it a good show and we i think we talked about that a couple times where if a band like will will cancel a giant show some huge national artist and like sorry we got to cancel our singer can't sing i, I mean just have it tracked yeah <laughs> you know i yeah. mean yeah I, I don't know if you know this or not i will i will d divulge it to you and all the amazing listeners um is we've never done this before until this summer uh we had a friday saturday summer gig uh and mason's voice was completely gone we we turned on the tracks and mm -hmm. he lip-synced yeah two shows wow Good. and who cares and no one did no one knew no one knew no, no one, one said anything the crowd was happy we didn't tell anyone that we did it and and like had we not even just thought about that, we would have canceled two shows and, yeah. and had two purchasers really mad at us yeah. because of that, you know? So, and, and how many, know, how many ticket holders, right? Like, yeah. you're going to burn all those guys just because of one person's health issue that's yeah. temporary, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. this is sliding off into a whole, a whole nother tangent, but, but what I'm trying to say is like, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be prepared to be this just entertainment right. juggernaut that controls the room. And right. I, I, right. I'm really excited for your new project because I think you are thinking about it that way. You're thinking about it, band intros, transitions from song to song. They did these blocks where they would go for like four songs in a row. And instead of just stopping the song and then five seconds later, next song starts, they would, they created like little five second transitions where mm -hmm. tempo changed and then boom, next song. And, that's got me thinking like, okay, hey, instead of that five second pause to load the next jam, like let's just figure out how it's a how yeah. it's a straight through for five songs, you yeah. know? Yeah, I've been thinking hard about that too. You know, I realized that in um I'm I'm driving playback out of band helper and there's a config that you can switch that it will keep it will keep playing the track it's playing even if you move songs, right? So I can yeah. I can move to the next chart and leave the audio playing before, which means I could load up four or five in a row, right? And not have that gap between them. Um, how does how does band helper work because that's that's what's playing your tracks in your click right yep so is it all in like a, like the same session to where like a marker will move it to the next thing uh what's the uh thing that everybody told me to use that i'm now using and i love it it's uh able a set able set yeah no it's it's literally just playing an mp3 and the left the left ear of it is click and track click and cue and the right ear of it is track and i have them coming into separate channels in the board so I can route them separately, right? There's no click coming out the mains, yeah. Right? But it's just an MP3, so it's left and right channel are in sync, and you um, can pretty quickly move to the next one, like you were saying. Yeah, yeah. You you pick the next song, and there's a little play button at the bottom of the of the screen, and it just it just fires right up. And so um, the the transition between songs is not long, but I've been always that guy who's like, two seconds is too long. I want to bang right to the next song, I, you know, hundred percent, right? So for me, like, get to the next song, fumble a little bit. In the rehearsal room, there's been like this, okay, ready, ready, uh, that cannot happen on stage, right? Everybody, the assumption is you're ready. Unless you're hollering at me, I'm going to hit the play button, right? You're ready. Dude, <laughs> when we made that transition to say, no, 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 it's just song, 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 yeah. song. It was, that first show or two was like, oh, we couldn't hang on. We're like, this ride <laughs> sure, is going, we're like, yeah. no! Yeah. But now, now that it's there... Yeah dude you're right five seconds is too long yeah it, it just feels like an eternity yeah. and, and to anybody out there thinking about doing it just just you got to do it you got to make sure everybody's ready to start the show and then it goes and goes and goes until somebody's like i fell off i help me help me right. help me you know right. i mean right that's the only way to do it right
Yeah. Yeah. And that's easy to do when there's no track to deal with and no tech to handle between, you know, I got a foot pedal that changes songs in, in set list or if, if, you know, if I need to. Um, and so it's, yeah, it's been, it's been really easy to be that fast between songs, but, um, but we don't have, you know, as much as I want to, the next step is to build medleys and through lines and yep. nonstop things. And I've got some plans about that, but none of my tracks do that. Every single song is separate right now. So, that, and, that, and so there's no way to, to, there's no way to like, well, yeah, I guess there's probably ways of just making them a long song instead of that's right. just three separate songs. That's right. It would be, like it would that. be a, a one MP3 that has three songs yes. in it back to back with something built nicely inside logic pro that gets you know, from one to the other. And then I just hit play on the first one and then be able to switch so songs in band helper without upsetting the playback from the previous song. And can um, you, so, so that was a one thing I learned from this group. It was incredible. was everybody kept talking about able set yeah. for Ableton. Yeah. And I was like, I, I don't need it. Oh, we're fine. And then once I actually took everybody's advice and used it, it's incredible because what it does is, all the songs are in the same session in Ableton and then markers make it move to the next marker. So it used to be me reaching over and hitting a keystroke to get the next song to play. And now, now the computer just goes off stage, mm. uh, you know, so, so the ability to take that off your plate someday might be really huge for you to just not for sure have to be thinking about what is the next song and how yeah. do I, how do I turn the page to get there when you can just sit there and all of a sudden the cue hits and says, Next song, well, this song, and then we're it, going. it could probably fire the MIDI that changes my song setup in, you know, in the prompter yeah. and on my guitar rig and just change the setup in the, you know, you know, bump the Meister DMX to the next preset. And like that can, yes. that could all drive out of that. I, I guess it could probably be playing my same MP3s. It wouldn't have to be multi-track. It could just do what I'm doing now. Probably, yeah. Um, that's interesting. I should One thing at a time though. You got to get that first. For sure. Oh my God. Right? Yeah. No, I don't want to, I don't want, I'm still, I'm thinking six months down the road. Here's the other thing in terms of like spectacle. Um, I have, it, we're a, we're a power trio. <laughs> we now have tracks, but we're essentially bass, drums, guitar, which, um, in previous groups, when I've had more than one guitar and I could, I, like, I didn't have to hold down the guitar work. I could, I could just sing and like, that could be my focus. I could take the wireless mic out of its stand and run around some and do that kind of thing. And with, I'm the only guitar and when I'm gone, ain't nothing. Um, that's been really hard. I felt really pinned in spot. And so. The track is starting to free me up about that. And, and part of the set list that I built is the three or four songs in a row that have no guitar. It's just live drum, live bass track and me vocally. And so, um, God, we played through those three or four songs um, when we rehearsed yesterday. And I did. I set my guitar down and I just vibed them. And God, it felt so good. It felt like I, like I could dance at the mic. I could move around a little bit. Like I could, I wasn't, you know, guy who's doing two jobs <laughs> and, and like there's a the tracks handling one of my jobs it can just do that and um and it's going to give me the ability to 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 be freed up there are a couple of places where the tracks have really long um outros or um you know the africa outro just goes forever in the original song and our track goes forever too but it's fine i'm going to run around with my wireless guitar like off the stage and playing with people in the room and um, it's giving me some, the, the, the whole move here is giving me a lot more, um, physical, uh, uh, opportunity to play, which is something I've really kind of been missing in this current setup. So that's exciting well, too. You, no, that's amazing. And something you can keep learning from these, these large national artists like 21 pilots is there's a, you, you create like a reason for people to be up front. Mm. you know, or, or you create a reason for them to be on the floor of the pit instead of like buying the ticket way back there because if if they know that cool things are going to happen to them mm. or they're going to see cool things down at the bottom then then they want to be there right. so whether it's it, whether it's on a smaller scale you're playing a bar and you just want it to look packed because people are up front then then they know that oh man like at some point dan's going to run over here and like he's going to give me a pick and he's going to let me play his guitar and then at some point dan's going to run over here and like he's going to ask somebody to sing this verse if you keep doing that then they know it yeah and then they want to be a part of it versus like, let's say you're selling tickets and you've got this premium pit in front of the, the, the stage and it's more expensive. Like we need to make sure people are going to get there and buy those tickets. So remember they get to do the fun stuff because yeah. they're up front. Yeah, no, yeah, no, you got to gatekeep some value for those folks to make those, make those tickets worth their time. Yeah. 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 I, I just think it's huge, man. Just to think about it in that perspective, you don't have to, 
pre- prepare a magic trick like a, the right. prestige yeah. at your show now yeah. my brain wants to do it so of course I don't know how we're gonna do of it course. But, of course. But, but you know you don't even have to things. you don't even have to do I love you, little things i was gonna say um i saw fleetwood mac a few years ago and at one point mick fleetwood wheeled out like literally pushed on a wheel deck a little cocktail kit i mean he had his whole big rig up there on a, <laughs> on a, on a stand <laughs> and he wheeled out this like two tom snare kick couple symbols like a tiny little kit and sat down in like on the lip of the stage and they did some acoustic stuff that was i don't even know what they played of course but you know he was down front and he was he was uh i mean he's crazy engaging even when he's at the back of the stage up high but like yeah. down front with people he was like able to play and be with be with the band in a way that was close and it felt really it was like a moment of real intimacy even though i was at the very far end of the massive, <laughs> massive stadium you know but but it, it felt like it, it felt different. Yeah, it was a shift in energy, and it was um, it was a moment of closeness with these like towering classic rock figures. Um, so even a little, even a little, I guess it's a pretty big change. There's a lot of logistics in, in, involved in that, but still, it's not like some, you know, I'm, something small, man. Like I, I take your, I've taken your set list model of of the W, right? Yeah, yeah. Which which I think is huge, and it's important to know that that W does go up a little higher maybe than you think in the middle and then back down and then up. But I've taken your model and I've split it apart in the middle. And then right in the middle after that giant up is a, is all the way back down to the ground. Uh It's, it's all the way. It is the, it is the essentially an intermission without being an intermission. And that is when we take a second to just like, that's the one time we really talk to the crowd. Like I'll usually have a speech I want to say. And then that's when we do an acoustic, mason and jerry do like an acoustic version of a song we bring we bring it all the way back down that is that has been our new model is taking your w but like after that backup boom you're yeah crush it it, it's a good way to think of instead of taking that intermission don't don't take the intermission don't give anybody a chance to leave right but you still need to have everybody have a little break in the middle so doing that 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 slowed up acoustic version of something or bringing the cocktail kit out or, you know, like there's a lot of ways to give everybody a quick break, but still keep the show going. And I think, I think that's what people want now is they don't want to go see the band that's going to play for four hours and has the the two breaks and you know, that they're, they're off for 30 minutes smoking outside. It's like, no, just play the play for two and a half hours and call good. Yeah. And if you can throw a magic trick in there, all the better. Just wait. All the better. We're we're all in this group for a reason. Our brains are like, I can oh, yeah, do that. Yeah. yeah big, Just big, wait till you figure big, out what I'm gonna. Show. I don't know what it is yet, but I'm gonna figure it out yeah, someday. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm thinking hard about costume changes and stuff. I'm gonna be. Yeah. For this one, I've got my Don Johnson white linen suit that I'm gonna wear for it. So we'll be we'll be set there. I think um, I think Ben, my bass player, um, he already had like an Inigo Montoya costume. <laughs> so I think he's going there. I don't know what Charlie's going to do, but I hope it's great. Uh I'm sure it will be. Well, and this is technically maybe a Halloween show, right? Like Yes, yeah, yeah, it's a Saturday after Halloween. Okay. And it's I'm not sure Halloween stuff's really happening on that day. I think that I think we may not lean as hard into Halloween as a theme, but but yeah, costumes. And that's how we'll be. We're we're going to be an 80s tribute. And again, the concept is like it's not the 80s now. Nobody we don't have a DeLorean. But you know, we all were big in the '80s, and so we're we're enjoying that now, even though we're now in our in our '50s. It's you know we were big in the '80s, so you know there's there's going to be a lot of um, I I have pictures in my mind of song specific costumes. I've watched Weird Al do that a couple of times, and yeah, I mean that is going to take a level of maturation of a project that we're not yeah. we're nowhere close to that. But but um, yeah, you know, I got this friend who plays um, keyboard locally. He's a really really great keyboardist and. Uh, and full-time full-time gigging dude and covers and he has a box of costume glasses that he puts on and they're different <laughs> for each song he has different like themed glasses for each song um i can't think of an example now but it's clever stuff and 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 uh, of course but it's like his shtick and you know he's he's this charming guy and um um so you know some some kind of imagination of like sometimes i'll put on here you you you're, you're the only one who can see these but the red of course red you know triangular we'll we'll post this picture this will be the cover of the youtube <laughs> uh, you know so you can see what i'm talking about those of you who are just listening just, but very just 80s glasses things, you know it's just you know ways to mix it up and have it be um you know plussed up a little bit i'm headed to disney this week something about walt disney's whole concept of plus plus it up right whatever it is it's great how can you plus it up how do you how do you mean like plus it up that just means well, like yeah uh, what can you add what can you 
you know, just you're not done. You're not done until you've kind of exhausted all the ways that you could. Okay, good. But what about like all the, the next step of something? Just constantly that's, thinking about how to. It was Walt Disney's term: plus it up. I think that's what we're what we're talking about. That's here, what we're man. talking is, about is just never never being complacent and just like well, yeah, here we found the perfect set list. Here it is. Yeah, you know this is what we do. Yeah. It's like well, no, yeah. can we yeah. can we change this up? Can we can we add a cool fun thing that we do here? Yeah. And I, I think that's exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, because I'll tell you that, you know, I've, I've also played in a band where we really had it dialed in and we were doing the same thing every night. And before long, it was miserable. We were not we were not happy people. Right. <laughs> we we are considering we finally got to the point where, you know, where our show, our contracts are now for about two anywhere from two, two hours to two hours and 30 minutes mm -hmm. for our show. We're to the point where now when we add these new four to five new songs that we're already talking about adding this fall, we're we can pretty much have a completely alternate set. Mm. Uh, so I think I don't know how I'm going to do it yet, but I want to make known that you'll never hear the same set list from the Pork Tornadoes. That's great. That's great. You know, so I just don't know how I'm going to say it, but I, I want that to be a thing that, you know, well, if you saw us in March, you're not going to hear the same set list in May yeah, or whatever. You yeah. Know? And, you know, it's part of the part of the lore of like the dead. It's like passing around like, oh, they played this one there and it was a whole thing. And you hear them play, you know, whatever. Uh, I don't even know the dead's yeah. catalog well enough yeah, to cite a song title. I, I could, if I Casey thought for Jones. a minute, Casey Jones. Oh my God. But yeah, but how they did that at Red Rocks was so great. And, oh, it know. was way better. Red Rocks. You uh, missed it, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. You it's, can't miss the next show because yeah, yeah. they might do it again. That's right. Yeah, exactly. No, that's, that's the hype of it. Right. So that, that'd be a thing to lean into. Like, you know, you missed the show. Well, you missed the show, but don't miss the next one. Correct. Yeah. And, and a lot of people keep yelling like the, the old, old fans, they keep being like, ah, play, play that song you used to play all the way back in the day and we haven't played it in 10 years, but it's like, okay, maybe it is time to, yeah. to bring that song back. Yeah. Uh, and so maybe they'll just be a part of the show that is a two songs in the middle. That is just like, we haven't played these in 10 years and here yeah, they are, here you they know? Are. Yeah, that's fun. I mean, it's It'll and, be fun, man. And you it's got always thinking about different stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's the move. All right. Anything else for you about that? Shoot. No, man. I'm, I'm already tired thinking about all the work I'm going to have to put in to I figure know. out magic tricks and I stuff. Know. You know? No, this is the, this is the problem with talking with you, my friend is I, I leave it with so many new <laughs> ideas and I'm like, Oh, I'm just buzzing all of a sudden. Yeah. yeah take it for what it's worth for every hundred ideas I have, maybe one of them pans out. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, I mean, it's a numbers game, but it's, you know, you know, well, you got, you got to have, you got to have the numbers to play the game. That's the point. Yep. Yeah. You do. Yeah. It's like playing the lottery. You know, you got to do it enough times, right. have enough tickets to maybe have a chance to win. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, it was good. I'm glad you had me, man. It was a good, good convo. Yeah. Hope, hope Adam's enjoying his vacation. Yes, yes. Uh, and then you got, you're going to be out at Disney by the time this comes I out. Just will. living it up. Partying, partying with the mouse. All right. Well, Michael, as always a pleasure. Thank you so much for being here, being our bud, being the, you know, you know, a source of such uh, great ideas and wisdom. Always happy to be here, man. All right. You have been listening to the Cover Band Confidential Podcast for the week of Friday, October 18th. Everybody have a great week. Bye.